Being in the self-publishing business, I have run into my fair share of amazing and talented writers as well as illustrators. In fact, on this channel, I've actually had a guest appear here. His name is John Celestri, a legendary animator, also an author. So I was tickled to death to run into somebody within our Discord community. By the way, are you on our Discord community? Because if you aren't, you'll probably miss out on opportunities like this. Go over to dailyinks.com slash Discord. But at any rate, I ran into this gentleman. His name is James Lee. And actually, he's been illustrating for, gosh, his whole life until more recently he had a debilitating injury on his hands that prevented him from writing. He's actually going to share more of that story and how he became an author and what he's done. And so, a little bit more unorthodox, actually probably unorthodox to today's standards of modern self-publishing, you know, because we discuss things like taking out ads in magazines, which I never thought would be able to get a good return on investment. Well, without spoiling this interview, let's get right on into it. So James, just prior to us chatting or recording here, we were just discussing the fact that I kind of stumbled over you within our Discord server. Uh, what brought you over to the Discord server is going to be the very first question I'm going to ask you. Very, very basic. <laughs> well, um, back in 2018, um, I started working on my books, my novels. And so I first, I ran across Judy the Brook Broad from Book Launchers. Who you know who I'm talking about. So I was watching her program and she had you on. And so they put your Discord down there. So I joined your Discord and I was doing um, talks between listening to your videos in Discord and talking with her. But since she does not do fiction, she recommended me this other publisher. So I went over there and talked with them. And I talked with four or five publishers. I had four or five off different um, offers for the book. And so I just, you know, I sat down. The thing I did was I sat down with an attorney to look over the contracts. And he was very knowledgeable about books and everything like that. And he showed me which one to look for and what to not look for. And to be careful of when they talk about giving you five or six team members to promote your books and stuff like that. Because the more people get involved, the less finances and less amount of money you're going to make off your books. And when you start going through contracts, you see this big difference in pricing. You know, and how much you're going to make and everything. So that was the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. And then I started asking you questions along with her. And I was getting more and more. And my, the way I did it was kind of a hybrid. And st where I don't fool with the actual formation of the books. Okay. They do it all for me. And what they'll do is, now I, I went with Ingram Spark. Um, yes. Because I wanted that global, that global um, reach. And not only that, but my my publisher had a real good with Ingram Spark, so it was really easy to get in with Ingram Spark, mm -hmm. get on their catalogs, get it going, and everything like that. So that's how I started. Very interesting. It's the thing that stood out for me when I saw you join the Discord server was you know you were you were contributing on a regular basis. You were having conversations with people, very meaningful ones, as well. Um, but the thing that really made me impressed by you and what you're doing was oh my gosh your covers are absolutely phenomenal how the heck are you doing those covers because i just think you're a sorcerer at this point because they look absolutely incredible well the first one the the thing was i have to watch how much money i'm spending on the covers yeah. because you know you've you've done it like that <laughs> so the first one um the publisher did it in-house okay for me and that was it cost me about 120 bucks to do hmm. Which it's a basic, it's a real basic cover. I can show you the cover real quick. This is the cover here. Okay. It's real basic, nothing spectacular. Mm -hmm. And then what I did was I used the profits off the first book to um, contact a gentleman named Jose Garcia, okay. who used to work for DreamWorks, and I worked to deal with him. Oh. And he did the cover, which is behind me. Um, behind me, he's the one that did that for me. And then this last one, which is the one I just posted in the Discord. I did the pencils and inks on that and sent that to a guy named Gabe El Saeed, mm -hmm. who used to color Superman. And uh, he did all the coloring for it. So that's where that came from. It's it's incredible. Like, honestly, some people really do need to go and just admire your covers because they're just brilliant. 
um, and something that a lot of the audio podcast listeners aren't able to really fully understand. So maybe they will go ahead and search up your, your titles here. Uh, we'll, of course, leave a link in the description yeah. to discuss it more. So you, man, there's so much to unpack here. So I hope you don't think that I'm like fire hosing you here by any stretch. Let's take it back just a step because something you and I had discussed is not only are you a graphic artist of sorts that you're, you know, you're you're an artist period i should say graphics yeah. included as well but you're also a novelist so tell me how yeah. that came about like did you want to be a novelist did you set out to be that or were you an artist that just became a novelist well when i started out i was an artist okay um i was a penciler and another comic book great kelsey shannon who used to work for dc comics he was the anchor we started out real young um then back in 2015 i broke my hand and I couldn't draw for about six years. I had nerve damage in my oh hand. My. And so in 2018, I lost my mother. And if you know anything about writing, depression's always the, the key to writing because the doctor always tells you to start writing. And so I started writing. And that's when I started working on this project. And when I started writing the book, I was like, what do I want to do? How do I want to do it, and how is it going to work out? And it took me two and a half years to put it together. And then in 2020, I, I launched the first book. How did you feel when you finally launched it? I was extremely happy. Yeah. I, I was nervous and happy, and I'll, t I'll tell you why. When you launch a book, you're, you're worried about how it's going to do. Yeah. You know, I did, I did everything I could, and I did YouTube channels. I did. I bought ads in, on the backs of comic books. I bought ads in um, Scream Magazine, mm -hmm. which that's the biggest horror magazine there is. Mm -hmm. And I got a full page ad in that. And so I was promoting my own book. I mean, I was going out and spending some money. Mm -hmm. But when the book launched, the other thing is if you're doing horror, pick the right time of year to launch the book. And that's like middle of September. That's when you want to really launch it because you get about six weeks before Halloween. So everybody's thinking of it and what you're wanting to do it. So that's when I launched the book. And I was watching sales. And Amazon was good. Now, don't get me wrong. It sold out four times on Amazon. Nice. So I've, I've done really good with it. Nice. And, but what got me was it was selling out at Barnes & Nobles. It was selling out on Walmart. It was selling out in stores in Europe. And the other thing was the book got approved to be sold in Romania. Now that was a big. That's a big deal, because that's where Dracula's at. That's where everything's like at. And the government themselves limit what kind of vampiric books go into the country. And it got in. It got into the country. I've sold over 200 books just in Romania. So I mean, it really picked up. And then when book two came out, it really exploded. That's when I went up into the top 500 of horror. And for a small guy, getting into that top 500 is a big deal and I mean I was at two I want to say 455 was actually where I was and I was there for about three weeks so it really you know it really paid off it really did everything and then um, a friend of mine started talking to me about drawing again so I started working my hand felt good I had no shaking in my hand so I was able to start drawing I really started work, able to draw stuff but I wasn't planning on doing a book with the novels it just so happens that I had some old drawings of the characters mm -hmm. that I had done back in the 90s. And I was like, well, I can work on this. So what I did was I decided to do the comics. And I noticed that all the people that I was used to talking with are now on the independent circuit. They're not with DC Comics anymore. They're not with Marvel or Image Comics. And I started talking with them. And they were like, yeah, we can help you out. You know, but you've got to spend some money. And I was able, like I said, with Gabe L. Saeed, some other, other guys I knew, like Kelsey Shannon and stuff. So I just was able to get back into that field with them. So I'm doing both things on the side at the same time. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I, I think it's really cool to hear that you had such great success, especially for all that you invested, because there was a lot of different avenues. What do you think was probably the best investment for advertising and marketing for your book? Oh, it had to be Screen Magazine. Wow. When, when Screen Magazine... Now, you have to understand, Screen Magazine has a subscription of 250,000 cop copies or subscribers a month. Wow. That's what that mag and it's it's a global magazine so it goes all over. And I noticed that when it hit my sales went through the roof. Mm -hmm. I mean it went through I mean went through the roof. And you know, you start seeing this big jump, you're like, "Wow." 
and I've done it with the first book, I've done it with the second book, and I'm going to do it with the third book. So I'll run, I'll run ads always. The ads on the back of comic books brought in too. So it's not just doing the social media and Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff, but going old school ads pay off a lot too. Yeah, it's, it's got me really wondering, because I even thought at one point or another to buy out like a billboard sign. Because there's a lot of these, you know, content creators that share like, oh, go do Amazon ads, go do Facebook ads. But I think I wonder, like things like the Screen Magazine, like that placement could definitely make a difference, especially you're going right to where your audience is. Do you mind if I ask how much did that run you to run an ad in Screen Magazine and how large was it for you? Uh, it was a full page ad and it was uh, five hundred dollars. What? What? Five yeah. hundred? That's it? I would have anticipated That's That's so it. much more, especially for a full no. page. Huh? No, it was a full page ad. It was for sixty days, so I got two months. Yeah. Plus, I got their digit. They got they did a they did an ad digitally as well on their digital platforms. Yeah, I remember. So you get all this area. Yeah, I remember the uh, Scream magazine from when I was a kid because I I used you know still big horror movie fan and such like that. Uh, yeah. Did you ever look into Fangoria or is that even around anymore? Fangoria is still around. I haven't dealt with them yet. I'm trying yeah. to get communications with them. Uh, the other thing that I've done, which really helped me, was I went to the horror conventions. Okay. And I went to comic book conventions. And the thing is, the first one I went to, I took, I want to say I took 150 books with me. And this is a horror convention, and I sold all of them in one day. Oh. I was like, I'm sitting here for two days with nothing on the table. Wow. Like, at that point, you just, like, you smile at people and wave as they walk by. <laughs> So so now I have a complete setup. I mean, I have the banners. I've got like f four different banners like this. I've got multiple books. Um, I've got new artwork. I've got new posters. So when I go to conventions now, I have a. When you come to my table, there's a whole lot of stuff there. So I'm like all you know. I'm all set for everything. So the last convention was really good. I did one just a few months ago. I've got one coming up next next month. Mm -hmm. No, I'll tell you about two months from now. Um, I've had I've had one convention where I sold over 500 books. Wow! And how are you finding the conventions? So, and what do you typically have to pay for a booth? Well, um, the hard convention for two days was costing me $200. That's reasonable. That's all I pay for the table. It's an eight-foot table. You get to design it however you want, and they give you pre, you know they give you pretty much. Plus, they get you when they start milling out stuff about who's going to be the guests are going to be there who the artists are going to be there your names there your products there your websites there so you get pro promotion from there I always have business cards always have a mailing list that way people can sign up at the convention and if you even if you sell out you you can go to the website you can go to get Kindle you know I always have all that information right there at the webs on the web page the other thing is when you're actually doing a convention there's two ways to do things one Make sure you can take credit cards because a lot of people, that's all they use, yeah. or, or take PayPal or whatever you need. That's the main thing. Good tips. Like, uh, What would you say would be the best way to get a lot more eyeballs on your stand at a conference? What were some of the, because you said you had a couple backdrops, but what are some other tips that you have for people? Well, the other thing is, when you're, doing your, when you're at your stand, mm -hmm. um, I have, right now, I have three banners like this one behind me. They're eight feet tall. Um, it, different artwork on each one, and then I've got a new one coming for book three. And what I'll do is I'll have two. I'll have two behind the table, and I'll actually set two on the table. That way, when you walk in the door, here's this eight you, from top of the table, and then eight foot above that, so you can actually see it from the front, it from the door. Nice. So when you come into the big room, so it sticks out, and then you set. You have to set your placement where your artwork is going to be. Like I put the artwork for the comic book, I'll put in the middle up where you can actually see the actual artwork that's going to be in the comic book and then I'll have the books on stands around that and then of course behind the table I'll have boxes with the books and stuff in it uh, brilliant and you're selling 150 copies on a single convention that's that's incredible that obviously pays for the whole rental of the space all right, we could keep going down that path but I've got I'm so super curious because you're a hybrid publisher and you shared just right. a little bit about being a hybrid publisher. Now, of course, you've worked out some deals with a trad pub company to obviously distribute on your behalf. If I'm incorrect in saying it, please tell me. Um, no, I, I distrib distribution, except for Ingham Sparks catalog, I do all my distribution. I, right. I do all my advertising. Okay. Ingham Spark, you can 
you know, through English Spark, you know how English Spark works. Mm -hmm. Amazon orders from English Spark, the bookstores order from English Spark. Plus, I also have my website, so you're going to actually order directly from me. That way, I have books on hand. I can ship it. I can have it out and gone, and you know, next day. Nice. So, how did you get this deal worked out? Uh, was was this something you looked for? Did you have an agent that worked this out for you? No. What happened was, the one the one I went to, um, Judy, you know, book launchers, pointed me to to them because they do fictional they do fictional books. It's sort of like how book launchers does theirs. Okay. You know, they'll, they'll help with editing, they'll help with um, formatting the books, you know, hardback, paperback, and digital. They'll help you set it up with English Spark, and then they'll send it in. So, you know, basically it's the formatting and editing and stuff that I use out of the publisher, and then going into English Spark. Mm. That's all I use them for. So it's a done-for-use service more than a trad pub company. Right, right. Okay. And what it, what it runs out to, um, my first book, because I was doing cover and everything, I was probably out a little over $3,000. Okay. That was it. Um, the second book, because I knew what I was doing, and I had a I had an editor here um, with the publisher, I was out 1500 But I was starting, to, I was using the profits from the first book to cover the second book. So for that small little investment at the front, I'm making really good money on my books. And it's a lot more than if you go to a regular publisher. Mm -hmm. So with you doing graphic novels and comic books of sorts, uh, where is the first place you look to get that done? What's going to be the best quality for somebody that's looking to publish comic books? Well, what I'm doing, what I'm doing for the comic books is I'm, on, I'm talking with, there's a company in San Antonio, because okay. I'm here in Dallas, and um, I've dealt with them in the past. So I'll probably contact them first. I haven't contacted a publisher yet because I'm still drawing the book. Okay. And until you have it all done, you really don't want to start going out. But there's th there's four publishers here in the United States that do publish book comic books. Okay. Uh, each one of them are, pr are pretty good. The, what you do is you contact them and they send you samples. So you can look at their work. Okay. And then once you do decide which one you go to, then you start negotiating with them. And they usually have, with them, it's not like working with English Spark. You do a base order. So what we'll do with the comic book, we're not going to do like we did with the... Um, publishing company. Okay. The comic book's done completely different. We'll do what's known as a crowdfunding campaign. Okay. And a lot of the independent comic books do that now. And once the campaign is done, then we will send it to the published printer. Have the printer do a basic print run. Usually it's a thousand to three thousand copies. Okay. It'll come in, we'll package them and then ship them out to everybody that paid it for up in advance. Okay. So that's how we do the independent comic books. Now, are you guys sending those out like in like a plastic wrap and cardboard backing? Like, no, okay. we're doing what's known as a Grumman mailer. Okay, a Grumman mailer is a specific type of box that is designed to ship books. It is very protective. Um, I don't have one in front of me, but basically, what it does, it folds up inside the box. It folds up to hold the book perfectly still, and then you fold another type on time on top of that and it folds up and you tape it all up it makes it where the book will not get damaged brilliant and i'm sure you so don't you want to mail it with crowdsourcing <laughs> no no you don't and usually if it's a kind of book what we'll do is we'll board and back it before we send it out that means it's in a, it's with a backing board it's with a um, protective sleeve that's over it's plastic that's waterproof you know everything proof and then we'll put some we'll put like bubble wrap around it and then put it in the box and send it out that way this is brilliant. I, I really, this has just been a masterclass. I was not anticipating today, especially the, the element of using Scream Magazine and conferences, and especially conferences that are related to your niche. You and I got to talk off camera here because I'm just now breaking into horror myself, and I'm just, my mind's kind of blown right now going into traditional media like Scream Magazine or Fangoria and such. So, Well, I mean, there's, I'll, I'll tell you how, how big this, this the whole generation is. Right now, there is. Um, it was released three weeks ago. Uh, the title is called Ruby Dragon. It's a brand new manga that just got released. It's already got sales of 425,000 copies a week. What? <laughs> yeah, that's what the that's what it's running right now in Shogun Jump. It's 425,000 copies a week. Oh man, it's insane. That is pretty crazy. Well, hey, we're gonna wrap up today's podcast with the important question I always give all of my guests: What advice do you have for aspiring authors and self-publishers out there? 
First off, remember, if you're writing fiction, everything is on the table. You can do whatever you want. There's no rules. The only limitation you have is the imagination in your mind. And as long as you let it run, do whatever you want. And don't be scared to write something. Always write it down. That way you always have it. Big thank you to James Lee for taking some time out your day to spend some time with us, folks. Make sure that you go over, visit his website, thevonsteins.com, so you get more details about his books and such, and uh, help support an indie author. And if you want to get showcased and featured something like this, make sure that you go over, join our Discord community, become an active participant, and who knows, maybe you'll be able to get an interview yourself. That's at dalelinks.com slash discord. I'll see you on in there, and also I'll see you. The next interview will be with the absolutely amazing and fun, energetic, enthusiastic Johnny Andrews. I'll see you then.